In a previous video, I already walked through the Airfly controller and showed all the cool features it has, but I didn't go much into the user section. So I thought let's have some configuration fun, connect the USB cable and bring up the interface so you can see how easily you can set this up for, let's say, a given live production. So basically, it will have a default configuration that you will pull from course.scarhoy.com, which is our online database. And even there, you could modify it. But when it arrives on your controller, you can do local modifications. So I imagine that for a given live show, I wanted to um, use one of the bus rows for selecting sources on ME2 on a ATEM switcher. And the other row, I want to select a few uh, stills for media uh, for the upstream key and then enable on and off the upstream key and play back some macros. So I hope that sounds fair to you. And uh, I have connected the controller to my laptop with a USB cable so I can go to the Skarhoy firmware application and open the serial monitor. And the reason why I want to do that is because I can open the web configuration interface. And that gives me a really um, direct and fantastic way of controlling or uh, configuring the controller live. So you can see I've done that with a few other controllers before here. And this interface you see right now is the web server running on the Airfly. So I can now go to my um, this row and set it up for ME2 action, okay? So uh, let's just click one of these buttons at first, and then uh, I will disable all these uh, sections and just let the user section remain. So in the user section, you can see the button I just pressed, that is program number one, has been set up for no action, okay? So uh, I just want to change that so it will set the preview source on, or it could be the yeah, preview program. Let's just make it the preview source on ME2, okay? And it should be source number one. So that's done now. And now I want to replicate that to the other buttons. So I hold down my shift key on the keyboard and then I press other buttons here so that I can replicate this behavior. So uh, I copy. Insert it on the next one, change this to two, insert, change to three. And this is really quickly done. Very nice way of replicating behavior um, in the Unisketch configuration interface. I like it. And it's easy to understand, easy to do, all these things. Now, uh, now we need to decide if we want to put Media Player 1 on here. I think we do so that it's consistent with the labeling of the keys. And that's it. Now, okay, we should now take a look at the controller because when I save, these settings are instantly put onto the controller. So let's just go and take a top view look on it. I press the save button, we wait, and we'll see that this row of buttons will now immediately be enabled for selecting sources on ME2. There we go, okay? So it's right there, let's check if it works. If I press these buttons, do we see anything happening? No, because we are not on MX Effect 2. So I go to Mix Effect 2 and you can see now it works as I promised you. And if I press and hold this one, it will make a cut as well as selecting the source. Awesome. Great. That's, that's what I wanted to do. So now let's work with the lower row. I go back to the web interface. I click this button. And again, in the user column of the web interface, this is where I put the actions that I want to uh, execute uh, when I'm in the user section. So it's again, it's set to no action. This is why the button is is turned off. I will now set it to select uh, media stills and that's gonna be specific still. So I imagine I uploaded some lower thirds um, which sits at location five for instance and I put it on media player one and now I simply wanna replicate that on five keys like this. Okay, so I insert and that would be media six media nine for instance media two and uh, media 10. okay so now five buttons will place a given still on media player one good so um there's something about coloring here because i think that i wanted to to have different colors now so i can distinguish these that will help because i don't have any displays and i only have the numbers to help me Okay, so what I want to do is to go to section one, and then I'll say that in this section, in the case of user uh, bank, I go to uh, for amber, uh, well, not amber, no, I'll take purple as the color for selecting stills, okay? Uh, save. Uh, and now we should see on the controller, we should see that instantly when it's done saving. Yes, there we have five purple colored keys, 
And if we go to the ATEM software control, you can see as I press these keys, I have media five. Was it then six? I think then I choose nine and I went back to something like two. Yes. And then 10. So they actually work. Great, great stuff. All right. So now I want to find out, uh, maybe take uh, key number eight, which is spaced apart a little bit and make that um, the key for enabling the upstream key on and off. And um, just for convenience, so I go back to the interface and pick key number eight. And then I will say, I want atom upstream key there. Uh, it should be there, this key. I want to toggle it on and off uh, using the auto feature like that. Now, if I do this and I'm doing that because I'm just saving, you will see that key number eight, was it? Will now light up purple. And when I press it, we will see that I'm turning on and off the upstream key um, on mix effect row number one. Okay, so here we go. Auto on, auto off for the upstream key. But what I don't like is that the key is purple. So I don't have any communication to me that this function is different. But we can so easily do that because I just go back to the interface, find the component again, and then I add an action called system local color. So now I decide to put the color up here. Let's let's choose red. So red, red is a warning color. So I know if they press the button, then it's probably going to do something horrible, um, like turning on a key. And we are now looking again at the interface. So we are saving and immediately now it is red and communicating to us that it is different in function than the other keys. So the final thing I wanted to do was to place a few macros here, but I think my time has gone now. And you can imagine exactly it's the same uh, system that you just place actions for those particular macros that you want to break out. So um, maybe the final thing I should show you is how easy it would be to just wipe this away when you're done. So I, my, my, my idea was that this would be for a particular live show where we just connect to the controller and set it up. So what I want to do now is to go to the Skahoy firmware application app and then you press the pre clear preset button. The controller will reboot and we'll see that happening right now. It's rebooting and we'll see that the user section should be clear as it has rebooted. There we go. Connected to the item switch, I go to the user section. It is blank. So the controller is completely fresh and back to the configuration it received from coreskahoy.com before. Very flexible, very cool. And I hope you learned a lot from watching this video so you can see how much you can actually do with this uh, fairly inexpensive switcher surface for ATEM switches or vMix systems. They are all running on Unisketch software, supports device cores, um, and will allow you to do this kind of configuration in the field and before your live production. Let's get